Alright my friends, in this video we're going to be talking about and showing you, demonstrating the Mac Mini. Now I got the 6 core i5 8GB RAM Mac Mini because my MacBook Pro 2018's keyboard, I'm sorry, butterfly, it broke down. So while that's getting repaired I've been playing around with this guy full time. I've been doing video editing, gaming, that's pretty much all I do actually. Just those two things are coding, programming and I have to say, you know, I was I was impressed. Okay, I I kind of developed a love relationship for it. I wasn't expecting to find it useful. I thought it would be a mess because it doesn't really have a GPU, and um, it works really well. Like this model has seven thousand verts. Seems to be working fine. Yep, everything looks in order. I didn't struggle with any of the performance. Seriously, like um, I can get lots of tabs on Chrome, I can get Final Cut up and run, you can actually edit 4K videos. So I've got um, a bit of Visual Studio in the background and lots of tabs in Chrome. And this project, it is a 4K and 25 frames a second. And as you can see, I'm jumping around. Things are looking good and fast. Obviously, um, avoid anything graphically, slightly even graphically intensive like overlays that kind of stuff you can't do that stuff on this machine you need an eGPU on that so for general video editing it's all right to use the Mac mini but when you start using lots of rendering effects you can see that it gets pretty slow here I'm just disabling the background off and on and you can see it is a couple of seconds wait between edits and I am on better performance I even played some games in boot camp and uh, Okay, they're slow. You have to be a sadomasochist to enjoy it. Like I was getting 15 frames a second. What's she gonna do? Yow! Oh. Damn. But I've been playing games for a long time, so I remember when games were 10 frames a second. So for me, it was the fact that you could load all the games and they'd run a bit slow, that was impressive. Obviously, I'm doing all this stuff with no eGPU. So the fact that I could get it running it inspired me and it was only eight gigabytes RAM. You can see that I've got some compressed RAM and I'm using the swap. So pretty much most of my memory is being used and this is what it leads to. I've hit play, but I've got the spinny progress bar while it has to uncompress the project and put it back into memory. Have you wanted to improve your jawline depth? Now that that project's loaded in memory, it runs really fast. So I hit play and it appears on the screen. But if you do switch applications and have the Mac have to compress Final Cut Pro and then have to uncompress it back into memory, then playback. All these applications were loading with just eight gigabytes of RAM was really good. I did some Autodesk water. All right, we've got Alexis over here. She's our former stripper friend from the 80s when you used to be allowed to strip, nowadays you can't, so this will be censored out. I did some ZBrush, that one doesn't really use a GPU but, and the thing with ZBrush, it's all about editing the model. So here I think I'm gonna get a sphere and I think they need to be bigger, right? Boom, boom, oh my god, there you go! ZBrush works on a Mac Mini! I gotta say, like, I'm more than impressed. I heard that it was like a no-go machine, but it's, it's a good machine even without an eGPU. But my friends, I'm of course gonna be showing you all the details in the video. Now everyone I know in the history of the world loves a bit of Synbench. They don't try out apps, they just Synbench it away. So I'm gonna be showing you the Synbench score of the i5 Mac Mini, because it's not about using real applications. It's all about this Synbench application. How good does it do? Like, woo, get a good score, my friend. What is it gonna get? So over here, our CPU is going 3.8 gigahertz. And we got a score of 739 for our first one. Let's run it again, because everyone likes running it as much times as Muslims like to pray. Second time round, it's 822, 877. Now what's cool here, you can see the CPU is going at 3.9 gigahertz and the fans are locked in at 4,600. It's not going higher. The temperature is locked in at even 97, 98, not hitting the 99s or the 100s of the MacBook Pro. So there's no throttling going over here in this application. It's just cruising, cruising on up. And on the third test, it just keeps on going up and up and up. Look, 914 CB. This is the i5. 
Great thing about this Mac Mini, the fans just ramp down right away. There's no extra fan noise or anything like that. Like you get on a MacBook Pro, it just goes up and they go straight down. All right, so we got an abysmal. That is the worst frame rate I've seen in my life. 41 frames a second. Now, bomb, what is the result you got on the CPU is 954. Pretty damn impressive for an i5. Let's see uh, the OpenGL test. That should be fun. And bomb shakalaka, that is a score of 56 frames a second. And this application seems to be running completely fine. Got no problems with it. Let's see. Everything looks good. Yeah, so it's, it's really nice with Xcode. Obviously, this isn't a graphically intensive application, but compiles are quick and you can use a simulator. All right, let's see how fast FFmpeg compiles. Three, two, one, go. The Mac Mini i5 just beat the i9 <gasps> MacBook Pro. What? All right, let's get a bit of Photoshop cooking. Let's make this image awesome. That's right, make this guy big. Gotta say, it's pretty smooth, pretty responsive. And you know what? Let's make him look cosmetically good. Add in a bit of Gaussian blur. As you can see, it's nice, it's smooth, it's updating. But you know, let's make it look better. Goodbye, Ash, goodbye. You know, mastery comes at a cost. So to get the real good, good, good stuff, all right, my friends, let's jump into a little Z brush and let's put a bunch of models on the screen. Cylinder. All right, this model has 7,000 verts. Seems to be working fine. Yep, everything looks in order. This guy broke every computer ever made. All the MacBooks, let's see if he can play. Oh my God, very, very slow. Look at that really slow animation. But, you know, the fact that it's on the screen is very impressive. I gotta say, this is 350,000 verts we're displaying. Uh, it's turned into a nice sexy car. Look at that. Amazing. Let's jump to the frame. Let's pause him. Stop that there. Look at that. Look at that movement. You know, you can actually do some damage with this. I just wanted to show you something a bit weird. So, the Mac Pro, sorry, the Mac Mini's over there and my magic mouse is over here. So I'm moving the mouse, but it's it's really lagging behind, especially this part. Look, look at that timeline, it's just, I'm moving it, but it's just, it's really laggy the mouse every now and then, occasionally, look, it's just, it's just being very choppy. So for now, I've switched over to a wireless mouse and this one is super smooth. So there's, there's something with the Bluetooth connection of using a magic mouse or there's something causing it to become a bit choppy. Actually, this one's now working fine. It's very occasional. Only one Bridge OS T2 related crash so far. Why? Why do you have a T2 chip inside you? All right, Bridge OS error number two. Thank you, T2. Thank you very much for ruining my Mac Mini experience. While you can transfer files from your camera to the Mac Mini, you can't power the camera from the Mac Mini. Whereas from the MacBook Pro, you can charge cameras. Hmm. Yowzers. These guys get really hot. Probably 50% hotter than the MacBook Pro, or maybe even 100. It's really hot. But you don't have to put it on your lap, so that's a, that's a win. One thing I did really love about this Mac Mini is the fans. Honestly, like it's so quiet. Like the fans do ramp up and they ramp up when you expect them to ramp up. Like if you're doing something seriously intensive, they will ramp up. They sometimes won't even go full throttle. They only go up to 5,000 RPMs. The MacBooks, the new ones, they go up to 6,000 and they have two. This one only has one fan. So it's a lot quieter than MacBook Pro, but it's expected fan noise. The MacBook Pro is like every now and then it will just, I don't know what's going on. They will just, well, these guys, they go up when you expect them to go up. And when I was playing games, obviously it's not using a GPU, but like it was quiet. So I really enjoyed the fans. It's beautiful and small, although 
I personally wish, like maybe it's just me and the Mac Pro obsession that I have, I personally wish they make it bigger, like, or, or they release a bigger one, just one that's big enough so you can customize it a little bit, put in a GPU yourself, I think it's really stupid. Or maybe it's nice, I, I want to know your thoughts. I personally think it's really stupid that I have to buy a separate case and put a GPU in there and then put in a Thunderbolt cable when if they just made it slightly bigger and just slot in a GPU directly, it will just make it a more integrated solution. Like upgrading the RAM, CPU, all that stuff. Like if they could do that, if, if you could do that, I'd probably enjoy it a bit more. It's just a bit annoying that I have to have two boxes on my desk and they look different. Yeah, it'd be nice if it was just one continuous unit. I get the fact with what eGPUs plugging in a laptop because laptops you want to unplug it and go. Whereas this guy, you're not really going to unplug it and go. I did enjoy the fact that it's got loads of ports on the back. It would have been nice if there was like a little little plug here for when you want to quickly plug in a USB because you know it's 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 a bit hard reaching around the back. You know what I'm saying? Reaching around the back just to plug in a port, you might scratch things up and all that kind of stuff. Pricing and all that stuff. I'm not sure because like as soon as they refresh the IMAX, maybe it's not gonna be a good deal anymore because IMAX are only two hundred dollars the, the base yeah. IMAX is only two hundred dollars more than the, the Mac Mini. And the IMAX they come with a keyboard, a mouse, a monitor, <laughs> decent speakers. So if you can wait for the iMac refresh, I'd probably wait for that because pricing is a bit aggressive. Just using the computer was also enjoyable. I had like four instances of Chrome loaded. I had loads of tabs in each of them and I wasn't struggling, even with the eight gigabytes RAM. I could play 4K videos on YouTube at 2X speed because I'm a 2X kind of guy and there was no stuttering, it worked really well. But overall, 8 gigabytes worked pretty well. Xcode programming, all that kind of stuff. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed that review, demonstration, showcase of the Mac Mini. Let me know, are you excited about the Mac Pro coming out? I kind of am, and though I kind of am dreading it. If they make it modular, as in you need to plug in eGPU and all this kind of like nonsense stuff, I'm probably not gonna like that. But, you know, let me know what you think. Take it easy. Ari Berdurci, welcome to 2019. Has your MacBook Pro failed? Mine has, so yeah, I'm out. We have the Mac Mini here. Oh my God! Is it? Uh... Oh my God! It doesn't actually fly.